Hello, in this video we're going to actually look at an example using matrices and using proof by induction to prove a particular result which is written here. Um, just a quick reminder of how induction works. Basically it's a kind of cyclical process. With, with the base case, we prove for some base case, the, the low, normally the lowest value, often n equals 1. Um, and it's not always n equals 1, but it will be in this example. So the base case will involve n equals 1. So that's like our base case. And then what the ingenious bit is what, what we do is we assume that it's in, in true, true, true for some kind of number k. And then in turn, uh, under that assumption, prove that if it is true for n equals k, it's also true for n equals k plus 1. And if we can do that bit effectively, and we've got to explain it properly, but we've effectively proved it for all values, you know, all integers in this case, because if we put, we've, we've shown the base case is true. So if we true, true, uh, kind of prove that in general it's true for the next case, we've effectively proved, proven that it's true for two because we've already assumed, we've already shown it's true for n equals one. So we can therefore show that it's true for n equals two by doing this bit. This is called the inductive step and that's kind of where the meat of the whole thing kind of lies really. So because we've assumed, we've, we know it's true for one and we know that if it's true for some general number k, it's true for k plus one, we've effectively tr true shown it's true for n equals two because letting k be equal to 1, for example, that means it's also true for k plus 1, which in this case would be 2. And then in turn, because we now know it's true for 2, so, um, we've also now proved it's free because of the generality of the k and the k plus 1, and so on as we go through. That's how induction works, okay? So it's quite... Um, it's quite ingenious, really, and it works with these kind of things where you know n is an integer, and you're you're following through from uh, following through with kind of cases through the counting numbers integers. So let's do the base case. Base case is often a pretty straightforward formality, but we have to do it otherwise we haven't proved anything. So base case uh, in this case n equals one. It can be. It doesn't have to be one. It could be zero in certain cases or in a certain case it could be two, three, four, whatever. In this case it's definitely one because we want to show it's true for all positive integers. So we've shown it's true for n equals one. We, no, we haven't done it yet, but that's what we need to do. So the left-hand side is equal to three minus four, one minus one to the power of one, which is obviously equal to three minus four, one minus one. The right hand side of the expression we're being asked to prove is two, uh, two to the power two times one plus one and put n in for basically we're putting one in for n, but kind of make it clear what we're doing because we are asked to prove it all the time. So don't just write the answer. I think it might be a little bit dangerous, even though it's pretty clear that that comes to the same thing. So we can now say the left-hand side is therefore equal to the right-hand side. So the base case is true. When n equals 1. Okay, so that's the uh, base case. Uh, so now, now assume... true when n equals k. So that's basically we're assuming that 3 minus 4, 1 minus 1 to the k is equal to 2k plus 1 minus 4k k and minus 2k plus 1. Unfortunately, I've run out of a bit of space there, so let's kind of move this around a bit. So let's make myself a bit of space. So 
that's minus 4k and two minus 2k plus 1 that's what we're assuming to be true okay this books up again okay so that's what we're assuming to do and now this is where the inductive step comes in and this is where the kind of the meat of the proof is if you like inductive step we need all bits together of course but this is where the kind of the the algebra work normally comes in um so we're going to start off with three minus four one to minus one to the power of k plus one now it's try it's worth trying to think about where we're trying to head to here what we're trying to get to is basically this expression with k replaced by k plus one so i'm going to write that just to it might be worth you know if you're doing these questions to write in the margin or separately what you're trying to head to don't write it you know in the middle of your work because it just then it then it doesn't make it clear but this is where we're trying to get to with k replaced with k plus one that's where we're trying to head to okay that's our target it might be worth actually multiplying all that out just to see just so that we can see it easier that's going to be 2k plus 3 obviously that's minus 4k minus 4k this is obviously k plus 1 and this is minus 2k minus 1 so that's where we're heading let's minimize that you if you write that in your work keep it very well separate of where you're working is otherwise your proof has got to be coherent so if you're writing stuff that you haven't proved yet in your proof that's going to be quite costly potentially so that's where we're heading we know where we're trying to get to um, so we'll just uh, work with that so that's equal to three minus four one minus one to the k times three minus four one minus one and that equals to now this is where the assumption bit comes in we're now assuming that this is going to be the same so that's 2k plus 1 minus 4k k times minus 2k plus 1 times by 3 minus 4 1 minus 1 so basically the assumption comes in with this bit we've assumed that's where we've used our assumption okay we don't we've assumed that bit to be true so that's assumption which comes from the line above so that's where the kind of that's the kind of heart of the proof if you like okay we don't know that's true but we're going to prove it's kind of true um, by effectively using the fact that it's true for the base case yeah in ret retrospectively so we can therefore do a bit of multiplying out now we are meant to prove this so i suppose we need to be careful so we're going to do this row times this column so that will be three times 2k plus one and Oh, I'm probably highlighting the wrong matrix, really, but never mind. Um, minus 4k times 1. I kind of highlighted the wrong thing there. I was I was doing, look, it was right, but it, I, I was doing that row times that column. So 3 times 2k plus 1 times minus 4k uh, times 1. And then the next, the, the one in this row here, this element here will be times that column, that row times this column. Okay, so that will be equal to minus 4 times by 2k plus 1. Minus 1 times by minus 4k. Okay. 
So then we want to do this row times this column. So that will be 3k minus 2k plus 1 or plus minus 2k plus 1 times 1. OK, and then finally that same row times this column. That's going to be equal to minus 4k minus 4k times by minus 1 times minus 2k plus 1. OK, so I'll try and minimize that a little bit to get myself a bit of space. So, OK, um, I'm going to now expand the target out because we kind of know where we're trying to head to. It's probably this bit is where we're. Hopefully we can show that those bits are going to be the, that's where what that's what we want. If we multiply this out, I can see I get 6K minus 4K. So uh, uh, plus 3. So that that's looking good for the top left one that I will get 2K plus 3. OK, and then. Multiplying this bit out quite a bit there, but uh, I've got minus 8K minus 4K minus 4. And I am going to get my minus 4K minus, ooh, minus 4K minus 4. I made a slight mistake with my target there, but you can see that we can see that uh, it's what we want it to be. Um, and then I'm going to do um, the multiplication here. That's going to be 3k minus 2k, which is k plus 1. So that looks right. And then this multiplied out, I'm going to get minus 2k plus 2k. That's minus 2k. And I'm going to get minus 1. It's looking good. OK. And just a remark, so I'll rub that bit out now because that was there just to um, so where we wanted to head. And then that should be we, we do need to arrange it because it is a proof can't leave it there arrange it in kind of logically where k would be replaced with k plus one so that's 2k plus one plus one minus 4k plus one and um, k plus one and 2k plus one plus one OK, so that's true. So we've done the inductive step. We've, we've, and so we've done everything we need, apart from we do need to conclude logically. So conclude. Um, so uh, the way I could, you can write conclusion if you want to make it clear, but you don't have to, so long as your words are clear. So you can, the inductive says, step says, if true for n equals k, also true that's what we just proved just above i see true for n equals k plus one and then we can say since base case true when n equals one the statement is true for all positive integers is true for all positive integers. And that is it. Done. So we got the state. We have to have all the ingredients there. The base case, assume that it's true for K, then the kind of meaty bit, which was this bit here, the inductive step, and then we conclude. And then that's it. OK. Hope that was useful and coherent. Okay, that's it. Bye.